this really old frame just lying around and I was sort of decluttering and um, instead of throwing it away I, I actually thought I bet I can add some pretty weird ornaments to this frame and see and see how it looks then so I started um, just freehanding some sketches there and I quite liked it so then I thought why don't I add some color and unfortunately because I couldn't use watercolor and as many of you know by now, that would be my paint of choice, but unfortunately it wouldn't really work on a, on a dark background, so I just had to use something, something thicker here. So I used gouache, and uh, gouache is also water-based, and it's, it's quite easy to use, but to be honest, I kind of, kind of didn't really know what I was doing here, and just hoping for the best. My plan after that was to wait for it to dry out and add some dark color pencil on top. Just, um, just a lot of pencil strokes to, to give it that hand-drawn feel. And then I thought maybe it would be quite cool to make this little painting to go in the middle of it. Maybe something, something sort of like um, a creepy vintage postcard with some vegetables walking around. So here I go, adding some red outlines and this nice little jolly scene of some sort of creepy vegetables walking around, holding hands. And for the for the dark red paper, I'm using this white marker. And that was basically the only way I could quickly add some outlines without losing my mind. Afterwards, I removed the pencil strokes just to leave the paint outlines. And unfortunately for me, I had to go back to gouache, even though by now I pretty much understood that I shouldn't really be painting with gouache, as I still don't know what I'm doing. And yet, here we go. So you probably can't tell, but as I was trying to paint this cabbage with gouache, I was, I was dying inside a little, and none of it was looking the way I wanted, but I thought, you know, I'm just gonna see it for the end, and maybe it just works out because sometimes that's how things go. It was pretty, pretty nice to go back to just using watercolor on light uh, background afterwards. And as you can see, um, I've just put the frame on the painting just to make sure I'm not overcomplicating the, the watercolor painting in the middle so that they still work nicely together. Here we go, little, um, little giant beetroot and his lady friend. Just gonna try, try on the frame here with this painting as well. Looking at the frame and back and making sure I like the colors that I'm picking so that I don't, I don't pick something wrong that doesn't really work with the frame because I don't really want to fuck it up. I 
Afterwards, when the paint was dry, I could finally start adding pencil strokes. That was probably my favorite part because, first of all, I love drawing with sharp pencils. And second, this is where the details were coming through. It's, it started looking a lot more like this vintage hand-drawn postcard. And it started working a lot better with the actual frame. So here I go, just uh, putting them together to make sure it's still, it's still okay, and I think it is. Uh, unfortunately, I painted that red one without putting the frame on, so as a result, um, it didn't really work with the frame as much as I would want it to. I felt it was just too busy, but still looked nice in a, in a set of three. I can tell you that not a lot of things are nicer than a sharp pencil. Mm -hmm. So I could keep enjoying adding my lovely pencil strokes here to this uh, wet little apple. And I'm not entirely sure what, what there is on the left there. I think it's like a mix between a carrot or a carrot and a gin. That's it, thank you for watching, and I hope that this little process video inspired you to maybe design a little uh, botanical frame of your own. See you later!